always across from the 90 degrees. The right angle, basically. Does that make, make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So your your kind of your trivial example here is that this is three, this is four, and this is five, A, B, and C. Often A is less than B. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of interchange those, but they are both always less than C. Mm -hmm. so C is always the longest, longest side in the right triangle. It only applies to right triangles. You know, there's other triangles out there, only right triangles. So the question is, is this true? Is A squared plus B squared equal C squared? It's three squared plus four squared equal to five squared. And that's where I said you might need a calculator. Um, it won't offend me or bother me if you use one today. I, I just uh, would like to make sure that you can do these calculations. So uh, don't they both equal 25? They do. They do. So this is, you know, 16, sorry, nine, nine plus 16 equals 25. 25 equals 25, like that. Got it. Okay, so that's all nice. Uh, so you might be wondering, well, what kinds of questions will you be asked to do? Well, the uh, the most basic question is I give you two of the three sides, and in particular, I'm going to give you the I'm going to give you the A and B. So here's an example problem. All right, they're telling you that A is five, B is 12, and C is unknown. So you have to use this relationship that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A is five, mm -hmm. B is 12, and C is unknown. So can you tell me what five squared is and 12 squared, please? Mm -hmm. That equals 169. Okay. So, so the mistake 13, here, go ahead. 13 squared on the right. Right. So C is actually 13. It is not 169. Okay. I get it. It's C squared. C squared is 169. And, and that's important. Got it. That, that's important. Like, like don't, the numbers need to be in the same what's called order of magnitude. I don't know if you've heard that before. No, I haven't. Okay, so like, you know, it, it used to be the NBA All-Star game, like the point totals were way higher. And I guess they kind of still are. Um, they're way higher than like the rest of the games. And so you'd see a score like 79 to 77. You're like, wait, is the game over? Um, no, it was just halftime, right? Yeah. Um, like, like... <laughs> 5, 12, and 13 are kind of in the same, they're in the same order of magnitude. Like they're, they're around each other. Yeah. And you know, there's lots of examples of this. You know, maybe it's, it's uh, you know, a kid shows up to school with a car way nicer than he's supposed to. And you're like, huh, that's, that's a little bit odd. That's a little bit odd. Um, so you have to use your, your, you know, reasonableness meter to, to decide, okay, like is, is, uh, you know, is the answer reasonable? So um, here's a problem for you to try. I'm just looking for the final answer. You're welcome to use your calculator, but it's just like the previous one, just different numbers.
C equals 41. So that is correct. So we got nine squared plus 40 squared equals C squared. And that's 81 plus 1600 equals C squared. 1681 equals C squared. So C equals 40, 41, you said, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Great. Any questions on that? No, no, I'm good. Okay. So the, excuse me, the next type of problem we'll see is one where they don't give you A, B, and C the way you want. Okay. They tell you that H is 21. Oh, they tell you that J is 20. And they want you to solve for K. Now, what you could do, and I mean, at first time I learned this, I probably did this, and I recommend the students, is I would write labeled A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. I would make it back into something I know how to do. That's something you do in math all the time. You make it back into something you know how to do. And, and I might even write A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 21 squared plus 20 squared equals C squared, which is really K squared. Could you uh, solve this for C for us, please? I'm going to be right back. All right. All right, I'm back. What did you uh, come up with? I have, uh, wait, I have, so 21 and 20 are the totals of the actual square rooted number, or am I still square rooting these? You have to square them. Okay, okay, then I'm doing this right. Give me one more second. Just, yeah, just like we've been doing. Yeah, you got to square them, square them. Mm. 
what what is 21 so, squared 21 squared is uh 441 okay what is 20 squared 400 what do they, they add together to make 841 yeah now you take a square root of that Can't find that number. Uh, so you should have a square root button on your calculator. Meaning it like, yeah, you know, it should be there. There should be. Oh, I see it. Okay. And, I, and maybe that's that. Okay, maybe that was the gap because before maybe you were just kind of guessing the numbers and squaring. Yeah, them. I was doing a guess and check. Oh, I see. It's, it's okay, that bad. that's that's good to know. You you have a button that will do that for you. Yeah. And, I know. All right, 29. 29, good, C is 29, okay. All right, so let me have you try one more on your own before we move to a new style of question. It's just like the last where it's not A, B, and C, it's different letters, but you're still solving for C, you're still solving for the hypotenuse because the Pythagorean theorem is really leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse. Squared. I mean, that's the whole a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, 25. Yes, Z is 25. Very good. 24 squared plus 7 squared equals 25 squared. Good. Okay. All right. So the, the next style of problem that you will see mm -hmm. is working backwards. Okay. And uh, we'll start out with some easy examples um, for this. So let me put another problem in front of you. By the way, this worksheet is available on my website if you want to do some more of these problems at a later right. time, including, I think it's got the solution there. Um, so this time, this time they're giving you a leg and the hypotenuse. Okay, so the leg, the leg is 15 and the hypotenuse is 17. It's still A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 15 squared plus B squared equals 17 squared. So notice the two squared numbers are not on the same side. They're, they're on opposite sides. This is 225 plus B squared equals 289, like that. Let's see that. And so you subtract, you subtract 225 because you look at the side with the variable and that's how you decide how to solve. So B squared equals 64. Go ahead and grab your calculator and take the square root of 64. Even if you already know the answer, just good to do. B is eight. I see. Any, any questions on that? No. Yeah. Okay, so let me have you try one here. Just like this. Let's go ahead and solve this just like the previous problems with different numbers. C equals 12. Oh, we're not solving for C though. B, B. Oh, so B, B. B equals 12. B is 12. Yeah. 5 squared plus B squared equals 13 squared. 25 plus B squared equals 169. B squared equals 144. And B equals 12. Yep, yep. So not too bad, right? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so again, the only other little wrinkle to this is what if 
what if it's not A, B, and C? So that's what you got here. Giving you W, which is leg, Y, which is a hot noose. It's not A, B, and C. I would recommend changing it to A, B, and C. Okay. So um, if you want, uh, you can do that. But go ahead and solve for X for me, please, and then we'll we'll transition to a to a new topic. What happens if I'm not getting a full number? That means it's probably not a correct one, right? Yeah, I mean, in this case, it's 20, 28 squared plus x squared equals 53 squared. You you should get a nice number. Okay. So does this look so let me like try to what you wrote it. down? Or... Let me try to resolve it. Just because, yeah, that didn't seem right. Forty-five. Forty-five. Good. Now you you alluded to something there that that is really really important because the problems all the problems I've been giving you today they've all been nice or friendly. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think I mean by that? Because you alluded to like the last one. aren't going to be as nice or what do you mean? All the all the numbers worked out as whole numbers. It's a sign that if it's not a whole number, it's not right. right. No, it's it's just that these are the nice ones. Um, so there are what are called there are what are called uh, Pythagorean triples. Okay. Okay. So what is a Pythagorean triple? Well, the most basic one you will see is a three, a four, and a five. And what this refers to is the size of the triangle, three, four, and then five. Now, six, eight, and 10 is also Pythagorean triple. What, what math operation did I do to go three to six, four to eight, five to 10? Or how, how do these double numbers eight. on the bottom relate? Did you say double it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, these are also Pythagorean triples, 9, 12, and 15. Right. 
and then you just keep on going. So, uh, uh, so, so, okay, so what I was trying to, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, you can multiply Pythagorean triple by any number you want, right? And you, you tend to see that on standardized, standardized tests. You see this a lot, like you'll see, uh, it'll it'll say something like this. It'll say uh, 30, 40, and then you got to figure out that this side is 50. See the three, four, and five there? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Now, this is the, like the three, four, five is the base Pythagorean triple. There's an infinite number of other ones. The next most common one is 5, 12, 13. 5, 12, 13. Right. So oh, the, yeah, and then you can, and then and then you can do any multiple of this, both like four, like like it's not just that it gets bigger; it could get smaller. Like, for example, it could be five sevenths, twelve sevenths, and thirteen sevenths, which I know is weird, but that is that is allowed as well. Like you could multiply or divide. I see. Okay. So the, uh, the, the, then there's a bunch more. There's, um, uh, well, we've, we've done a few of them. The next one I think is the most common is 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25 is one. And this list goes on forever. You generally need to know a few of these if you want to speed up your standardized test stuff. Um, but the, that's up to you. And you'll, you'll see this again in geometry. So you know, we're not going to spend, spend more time on this. Now, most right triangles are not nice. They're not friendly. Okay, like like the ones I gave you are all friendly and nice. Um, before we can do the ones that are not nice, we have to talk about how to reduce roots. Okay, and before we can talk about how to reduce roots, we need to talk about prime numbers. Do you remember the smallest prime number? One. No, three. Two. Two. Two is the only even prime number. Right. Then three. Then five. Then seven. Then 11. Then 13, 17, and so on. And this list goes on forever. You don't need to remember much past maybe 11. Like th this is sufficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So when I say reduce roots, here's what I'm referring to. We kind of already did that. Like, you know, you know the square root of four. The square root of four is two, right? Yeah. Square root of nine is three. But what is the square root of 12? Well, you're not going to like this, but it is the square root of 12. Because it's... Because it does not... It, so it does, it does not reduce to a whole number. Most square roots do not reduce to a whole number, but you can reduce them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, how do you do that? Say that again. I said you can still reduce them. It just won't be as clean. It, it, it will still have a root in it, right? It, it's not going to be like a, a nice number. It's not going to be a friendly number. Mm -hmm. So the more math you take, the more you get into real life, things aren't really clean. Things get messy. A lot of analogies I can make here, you know, relationships, finance, whatever, mm -hmm. family. <laughs> Everything. If you haven't figured that out yet, you will. <laughs> so how do you reduce roots? How do you reduce roots? Well, it, it goes back to this prime factorization. So you build what's called a, a factor tree. So these are considered branches. And you start with the smallest prime number you know, which is two. Does two go into 12? Yeah. It's two times six. And just like most things in life, if it worked, you try it again. Does two go into six? Yeah. Times three. Now you stop, you stop when you have all prime numbers on the leaves. 
So we do. Yes. Next thing you do is you look for pairs. You know, when you fold, like I, I like folding up my socks. I like them to be in pairs. Is that a pair? Yeah. That's two, two. So I circle the pairs and you can bring a two out. And when I say out, your answer has a part that's outside the root and an answer that's inside the root or numbers that go outside versus inside. So we'll put one, two outside and then one, two inside. No, uh, so when there's not a pair, see how there's not a, nothing to pair with the three, that stays inside. Oh, okay. Okay, and you alluded to this earlier. So the square root of 12, the square root of 12 becomes two times the square root of three. Two times, okay, I see that. Okay, so your, your goal, is to make a prime factorization, a factor tree. You stop when you have primes of all the leaves. And generally they're, they're these numbers in this list. Like you're not gonna get like big numbers or at least to start. And then you look for pairs. Any pairs, you bring one out. If you don't have a pair, it stays inside. Okay, so let's look at another one here. Let's look at the square root of 20. Let's start with, with two. Two and 10. Two and 10, does two go into 10? Yeah. Two and five, are there any pairs? Yep, the two and the two. So, the, so, so, so a two comes out and then it's the square root of whatever's left over, which is the five. A five. So these are equal. Now which is cleaner. I don't know. You could probably argue the square root of 20 is cleaner than this. I, that's, this is just formatting notation. This is just math. You know, you want to call it nonsense. You can, I, I don't, I mean, I don't make the rules. <laughs> I just provide the guidance here. Mm -hmm. What is, give me a little more of that little hump there. Was that, you know, di agree, disagree, dislike, don't care. And, and any of them are totally reasonable. Well, no, it, it makes sense. Like it's, or are you asking, is, it, is this not the answer? Like, I thought this was complete. This is the answer on the right. Yeah, yeah. That's too, I understand how to do that. That makes sense. But but keep in mind, they're both correct. Like, and they're, I'm sorry, they're both equal. It's right, just they're that both this, equal. One's just more like written out. I call, I, guess. Per, I call it preferred or preference. It's like oh. you could put your shirt on inside or outside. And like, what's preferred? Well, you don't want your tag hanging out. You don't want your logo yeah. stuck inside. Like, that's... This is preferred. They're the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here is uh, here is one for. Let's see here. Um, here's one for you to try. So I'm going to leave this up. I'm gonna put it off to the right here. Go ahead and give that one a try, please. Two square root sign seven. You say two square root seven. You don't have to say square root sign. That's that's uh, yeah. that's good. Um, yeah. Okay. Now it's possible to have more than one pair. Did you say is it or? It, it is. It is. It oh. is. And I'm gonna give you an example of that. But it is possible to have more uh, than one than one pair. Okay, so we're gonna look at that. Um, we're gonna look at that next. I think is that the right progression? Sorry, I'm trying to. <laughs> no, you're trying to the right progression here. Like, let me actually look at my uh, my worksheet. The most important thing about learning, from my perspective, is to give you these in the right order, where the the path is followed here. Um, I 
actually we're gonna look at a few other examples here. So let's say let's say we have the square root of eight, right? Okay. Square root of eight is two and four, two and two. You circle a pair. That means a two is coming out. But it also means that this two is staying, is staying in. So your ants are gonna have both the same number on the inside and the outside. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How about you try this one? Um, square root of 27. Three square root three. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, where to go from here? If I kind of alluded to that earlier, so let's let's look at the square root of twenty-four together. Okay. All right. So this is two and twelve, two and six, two and three. So do you have a pair? Yes, I have a pair of twos, okay? Yeah. So that goes on the outside. What goes on the inside is this two and this three, two times three. So whether whether you bring numbers out or leave them in, they're still multiplied. So your so answer is- you write it, that's like- the Well, you, you do two square root six. Oh. You still multiply them. So just to see, uh, you know, if you get that down, we'll try this one out, square root of 40. It's very, very similar to the one I just did. Two square root ten, or is it five? Uh, this this is correct. This is correct. I'll, I'll give you the shortcut for that in a, in a moment here. Okay, good. Doing great. Um, the only thing really to make these more difficult is is to increase the magnitude of the numbers, which we'll get to in a bit. But I'm gonna keep going through kind of the progressions here. So the next problem we'll look at together is the, uh, the square root of seventy two. Okay. Yeah. So this is two and 36, two and 18. Notice I keep trying the number till it doesn't work. Two and nine, and then nine is three and three. So this time I have two pairs. I bring, I bring, I bring them both out. So it's two out, three out, square root of what's left over, which is, and you don't have to do the in and out thing. It's just good to, it's just good for, for maybe when you look back at your notes, you don't understand why. Um, you build this tree, circle the pairs, whatever you bring out, you bring out, and there's your, your final answer. So take a look at that. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, I'm going to give you one to try here. Yeah, I think I can do it. All right, so square root of 48, that is for you to do.
is it four square root two? Uh, so I'll I'll now give you the the uh, how I know that this is not right. So the way the way to check these, and this this isn't like this won't help you do them, but it it's it's how you check. I'm going to square the four. Four squared is sixteen. Then I'm going to multiply it by the two, and that becomes thirty-two. So it should be four squared to three is actually the correct uh, answer. That's smart. So two and 24, two and 12, two and six, two and three. So notice you have two pairs of twos, which is what you brought out. You brought out a two and a two, but the three is what's left over. Right. Okay, so uh, it's okay, you know, you're doing fine. Uh, let's do the square root of 108. This is the next one for you to try here. Maybe we'll we'll get into uh, some, back to some triangle stuff here. But uh, let you uh, get a couple more in a row, right? Hello. You there? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, square to one eight. How how are you looking on that one? I still need to give me give me one more sec. Just thirteen's not prime, right? It is. So you, you should have two and fifty-four. Maybe you don't have that though. So no, I do, I do, I do. Okay, two and twenty-seven, three and nine, three and three. Oh, I had thing. I messed up. It's okay. It's okay. It, it, these are tough. I mean, they they and unfortunately the numbers only get bigger from here, which makes it even more yeah. appalling because it's like you, you, there just aren't that many that are small that work. Right. But you have a calculator. You just hit divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. Yeah. So it would be, it's not just six outside, right? Or what am I, I multiplying two times? No, it is, it is, it is, it is. There's two pairs. There's a two and a three on the outside. Oh, nice. And what's left over? Which number did you not use on the leaf? A three. The three, so that goes on the inside. So it's six square root three. Good. I see. Is that okay? Yeah. 
All right, we should do, we got to do a couple more here. I, I, I don't know that we're going to get back to the triangle stuff. That's okay. Um, again, just use your calculator if you need to, to, to do the divisions. Start with two. Um, you know, when you cut something in half, it gets, you know, it gets smaller. I mean, if you ever hear your parents talk about like investments or, you know, market's down by half, you know, like it's bad, <laughs> but it gets, it gets down pretty quickly. You know, you. Four square root 11. Like that? Yeah. Good, really good. Okay. Um, let me see if there's a few more of these. So again, like the numbers just get really large. Um, let me let me do a big one here. Like the square root of 1,000 and eight. Okay. Two and 504. Oops, 504. Two and two hundred and fifty-two. Two and one hundred and twenty-six. Two and fifty. Sorry, sixty-three. Okay. And then two no longer works, so it's now three and twenty-one. Three and seven. Do you see how you just you just keep going until yeah. then you circle pairs two, two, three. So on the outside, there's a two times a two times a three, square root of what's left over on the inside, which is seven, two times two times three is 12, square root of seven like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. There's kind of, there is another approach to this. If, you know, if, if this were a classroom, this is, this is, you know, day one lesson, day two, maybe give you some shortcuts or some other things to think about. Or if you didn't get it, we just do more problems here. But go ahead and give this one a try and uh, let me know what you uh, come up with. Is it, well, what I have is 10 square root three, but I'm not sure if that's right. Yeah, a little bit off here. So let's let's just go through it. Two and 360, two and 180, 180. two and 90, two and 45. Then you switch to three. Really important that you do it in the, uh, the yeah. order. So three oh. and then three and five. So pair of twos, 
pair of twos, a pair of threes, and then a five left over two times two times three. Square root of five, so 12 square root, 12 square root of five. Got it. So, okay, we're gonna stop there for today. Um, right. A new topic, good job on that. You know,